every second of the day and night use machines to help them solve number problems quickly and easily. These modern machines speed through tiresome jobs. Here is a machine that can add, subtract, multiply, divide, and do many other things. Man has come far from the days of long ago when the things he used for figuring were the built-in type. Man found his ready-made computing system very useful, but very limited. Man, being very clever, looked for better ways to tell how many. He began to use markers to keep track of things. Counters, notches and sticks, knots in a rope or pebbles to stand for each animal in his flock helped him tell how many. That worked well for a while, but gradually his flocks grew larger and larger. And he began to own so many other things that using one counter for each object was too clumsy. Something quicker and easier was needed to show how many. What do you think man did to solve this problem? Well, he thought and he thought, and he developed the idea of taking 10 counters out of the original line of counters, and then placing one counter in a line at the left to stand for 10 ones. This idea led him to make one of the first counting machines, which we call an abacus. The abacus was invented thousands of years ago, but it's still used today in many parts of the world. Here is a Chinese swan pond. A Japanese soroban, and a Russian shchoti. Although the idea of the abacus is very old, its use for us is as modern as satellites, space travel, and guided missiles. By understanding and using the abacus, we can discover the meaning of our decimal number system. Let's watch these children as they discuss some of the things they discovered about the number system. These are open-end abaci. They are boards on which we have fitted sticks to show groupings of ones, groupings of tens, groupings of hundreds, and groupings of thousands. We put counters on the sticks to show how many of each grouping we have. We really carry, in addition, when we add eight and four on our abacus. We put eight counters on the one stick, and then we put on four more and we have 12 counters. But on our abacus, just as when we write numbers, the largest value we show in one position is nine. When we have 10 or more counters on any stick, we take 10 counters off and use one counter to stand for a group of 10. So we take 10 counters off the one stick and use one of the 10 counters to place on the 10 stick. The one counter on the 10 stick stands for one group of 10. We have one ten and two ones, or twelve. Can you add twenty-six and sixteen on your abacus? We'd show twenty-six on the abacus as two tens and six ones. Now we add six ones to the ones position. This makes twelve ones. So we take ten counters off the one stick. The 10 counters are used as one group of 10. Then we add one 10. We have four 10s and two ones. We can read the answer on the abacus, 42. If we add 43 and 72, it works like this. Three ones and two ones make five ones. Four 10s and seven 10s make 11 tens. What do we do if we have 10 or more counters on the 10 stick? We take 10 of the counters off the 10 stick and group them as 100 on the 100 stick. The abacus shows 115 as our answer. Let's see how we show zeros on our abacus. We add five ones and five ones, and we have 10 ones. When we take the 10 counters off the one stick and put one counter on the 10 stick to show a group of 110, there aren't any counters on the one stick. When we write 5 plus 5 equals 10, we use a zero to show not any ones. Do we need a zero on the abacus? Well, let's see. 
On the abacus, we don't need a special counter or marker for a zero. The stick that hasn't any counters is kind of zero. The stick holds the player, not any. Do you see why we talk about carrying in addition? When we group 10 ones to 110, we say we carry one. We mean that we group the 10 ones to 110. When we group 10 tens to 100, we carry 100. The one we carry always stands for a group of 10 of the value to its right. Subtraction works in the opposite direction from addition. When we add, we increase. When we subtract, we decrease. There are two directions for counting. Increase and decrease. Let's work this example. To work the example, we can show 35 on the abacus, three tens and five ones. Then we can subtract the ones. Five ones minus two ones leaves three ones. Next, we subtract the tens. Three tens minus one ten leaves two tens. The answer, 23. But what about 42 minus 16? We'd show 42 on the abacus. We want to take away six ones. But since six ones are more than two ones, we must use one of the four tens, leaving three tens. We regroup the one ten to ten ones, adding them to the two ones, making twelve ones. We subtract six ones from the twelve ones, leaving six ones. Three tens minus one ten leaves two tens. Our answer is twenty-six. Grouping ten ones to one ten and regrouping one ten to ten ones is like trading one dime for ten pennies, or ten pennies for one dime. Ten pennies and one dime are equal in money value. Grouping ten tens to one hundred and regrouping one hundred to ten tens is like trading ten dimes for one dollar, or like trading one dollar for ten dimes. And on our abacus, one counter on the ten stick stands for ten counters on the one stick. One counter on the hundred stick stands for ten counters on the ten stick. Do you see what is true? Each time we move a counter one place to the left, it stands for a value that is ten times as large as it was before. If we move a counter two places to the left, it stands for a number value that is one hundred times as large as it was before. Look, do you see this idea? Three counters on the ten stick stand for a value that is ten times as much as three counters on the one stick. The three counters on the one stick have a value ten as small as the three counters on the ten stick. As man needed to show larger and larger numbers, he could keep adding more sticks to his abacus. As in writing numbers, we can keep on and on, and there is no last number. The ideas that work with ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands can go to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions, and on and on and on. Use the abacus you receive with a film to illustrate the things that we have discussed. Now you'll want to include these ideas. Positions on the abacus are like positions that we use when we run numbers, ones, tens, hundreds, and so on. The largest number value we write in a position is nine. On the abacus, we show only nine counters on any one stick. When we add numbers such as eight and eight, we have 16 counters on the stick, but we group them as one, ten, and six ones. When we subtract, we can regroup one ten to ten ones, one hundred to ten tens, and so on. The stick that doesn't have any counters on it acts as a placeholder. 
It serves like the zero we use when we write numbers. The ideas of grouping and regrouping are great ideas. Show how they work on your abacus or by telling about them in your class. The number system is one of the greatest things that man ever invented. The abacus can help you understand the number system. If you understand the how and why of mathematics, mathematics will be one of your favorite subjects.